I'm going to share a story that was told to me by Patricia Palacio. And it's a story about her family 150 years ago in Russia. Now, it so happened that her great-great-grandmother was named Anna, and she lived in a tiny village. And in that tiny village, life was hard. In the winter, it was cold, so cold that your toes and your fingers froze and the tip of your nose turned red. And in the summer, it was hot, so hot that swarms of flies would fly into your mouth and up your, in your nose and your ears all the time. And when it rained, the streets got muddy, and it was drought and dry, the crops, the cabbage and the beets and the potatoes withered in the fields. But the worst of all was when the Tsar's soldiers came through. The Tsar is like the king. And when the Tsar's soldiers came through, they caused trouble. They caused trouble when they came through. They broke things. They hurt people. Their horses trampled the fields. And when that happened, Anna and her family would quickly leave their house and run into the barn, and they'd hide in the hay so they couldn't be seen. And despite all that, Anna's life with her family was happy. Happy because every Shabbat, her mother would take out a very special china tea set. And she would put it on the Shabbat table in the middle, and she'd put tea inside the vase and the pitcher, and she'd put, pour the tea into the cups. In those days, they drank tea differently than we do. Two hands. A little glass of the tea, they used to say. And there was a special story behind that teapot. And even though the girls knew it, Anna and her sister, they'd ask her mother to tell it over and over again. They said, Mama, t tell us the story of the teapot. And the mom would say, this is our teapot of blessings. Because when your dad and I were married, a horse-drawn cart pulled up in front of our house, and in the middle of the cart there was a crate, and in the crate there was a tea set. And it was wrapped in horsehair and blankets to keep it from breaking, and there was a note attached to it, and the note said, this is a china tea set of blessings, and if you take good care of it, it'll take good care of you, and you'll be blessed with goodness and love and all the things that make life rich and meaningful. And as long as we've had this tea set from your Aunt Rivka, our lives have been good. And no sooner had she finished telling the story that night when they heard the Tsar's soldiers starting their rampage through town. And they heard the noise, and they quickly grabbed the teapot and the cups, and they ran into the barn, and they hid in the hay. And as they heard things breaking and crashing outside and people yelling, leave the village, leave the village, they worried for their safety. And the next morning when things were quiet, they walked outside and they went. And fortunately, their house was still standing and a few windows were broken. But as they sat at the breakfast table, Mama and Papa turned to Anna and her sister and they said, it's time to leave Russia. We have to go. And so they packed all their possessions and they put it on a cart. They didn't have a horse. Papa had to pull the cart and they left the village along with all the other people. And they walked and they walked. And some nights they had to sleep in the cart out in the, under the stars. And some nights they had to sleep in a barn. And they tried to make themselves comfortable in the itchy hay. But they made their way. And as they walked, the trip was long. And Papa got weaker and weaker pulling the cart until he couldn't pull it anymore. And he was sick and he had to get on top and, of the cart. And Anna and her mother and her sister had to pull the cart themselves. And they pulled it as far as they could to a village. And they knocked on the door of the village doctor. And she opened the door and she saw Papa right away. And she said, come in, come in, come in. And she started to care for Papa and Anna and her sister and her mother lived in the doctor's house for weeks, and Anna repaid the doctor by cooking and cleaning, and Anna and her sister did as much as they could, and as Papa got better, week after week, every Friday night, Anna's mother would take out the teapot, and she'd put it on the table in the doctor's home. The doctor's name was Svetlana, and they called her Aunt Svetlana, and she called them my dears because they grew so fond of each other. And she'd take out the teapot, Aunt Svetlana and my dears, and she'd say, may this teapot of blessings bring blessings on this home because Aunt Svetlana, you've been so good to us. And Aunt Svetlana would say, you've been so good to me. And they'd sip from the cup and they'd wish for blessings and goodness and kindness and compassion. And they'd put the cup away carefully and the teapot away carefully so nothing would happen to it. And finally, as Papa got better, it was time to leave. And they realized, though they didn't have any money, and they turned to Aunt Svetlana and they said, we're trapped. 
and she heard them. The next day, she showed up, and in her hand, she had an envelope, and she placed it in Mama and Papa's hands, and she said, here are your tickets for the ship to America. And they looked at her and said, we can't pay you back. We'll never pay you back. She said, don't worry about it. Someday you will. And so the next day, they packed up the cart. She had a horse-drawn cart because she was, she was a doctor, you know? Doctors drive nice vehicles. She put her in a cart, and they took the cart, and they went to the seaport, and Anna and her sister and her mother and father got on the boat, and Anne Svetlana watched as the boat sailed away, and she waved to them. And she turned a little sad because the family had left, and she went back to her house, and she opened the door, and she walked in, and there, sitting on the table, was the teapot. And she said, and she smiled, and she thought, they've repaid me. They left me the teapot of blessings. And Anna and her family traveled to America, and they got off the boat, and they were met by Papa's cousins, and they lived with Papa's cousins for a while until finally they could afford their own apartment. And the first Shabbat, they were in their apartment. Anna's mom baked a challah and set a beautiful table, and she put the one, the one tea bowl she had in the center of the table, and she said, this is our bowl of blessings. As long as we care for this cup and it cares for us, our lives will be blessed with goodness and compassion and kindness. And at last, our family has found peace in America. Anna became a great-grandmother. And she had a daughter and a daughter. And finally, Patricia Palacho was given this cup, the, teapot, the cup of blessings. And she held it, and she cherished it, and she kept it on his shelf day after day, and she took it out for Shabbat dinner as well. One day there was an earthquake in San Francisco where Patricia lived. The shelves came crashing down, and all the other things that were on the shelf broke all around. But when she went to look for her teacup, she discovered that it wasn't broken. It was still whole. It had landed on a pillow. And she knew that indeed this was a teacup of blessings. You see, we live in America. Our lives are blessed. Our cups overflow with blessings. And we know that from our place, we Jews have come from all over the world. We've come from Iran. We've come from Russia and Poland and Ethiopia and Spain. And we've traveled to America to find blessings and peace, and we found it. And we know that when our cups overflow with blessings, we have to share them with others. So as I said earlier, it's Immigration Shabbat. Remember our story, our stories of immigration. But we also know there are other people who have leave, had to leave the lands where they were oppressed or persecuted or couldn't live as they wanted to and travel to a land of freedom, whether it's from Mexico or Africa or Ireland, wherever they came to America or they went to Israel or they went someplace else. We know now that there are people in Ukraine who have to leave and find comfort and find peace outside of their homes in another land. And so as our cups overflow with blessings, what this story reminds us and what Patricia teaches us in her story is that we have to share our blessings with others. And we tell our story of immigration to remind ourselves that when there are others who need a hand, we extend a hand to them and help them find peace and comfort and blessings in the lands of their dreams as well. Amen. Amen.